me about the Corpse Bride. So actually, I began work a year ago-ish on both simultaneously. So I started the beginning of what was going to become like writing 10 songs for the two films. And it was all mixed up, right? Like two songs for Charlie and then a song or two for Corpse Bride and going to do another song for Charlie and then do a little more for Corpse Bride. So it was a real crazy year. But uh, the Charlie stuff was, well, I mean, it was all really fun. But the Charlie stuff is stuff that I'll never get to do again. So yeah. I was aware of that while I was doing it. That I was like, oh man, it's like this is just ridiculous. He didn't want to make it Broadway, like the original, and neither did I. And so he wanted to. His first impulses was to make it like kind of a retro pop extravaganza in the in the style of a Bombay or Bollywood musical. Bollywood being the Indian version of Hollywood, and they'll do all their movies have like you know. A bunch of songs in them and each song very often kind of sounds completely different mm -hmm. and often incorporates different pop genres and things like that so i wrote augustus glute and spent a long time on that one because i was trying to figure out what are the bloopers sound like and what is the tone of the thing and getting the feel of the whole thing uh figured out and then from there uh tim liked it and it's like i wasn't sure where to go where we were going to go. I thought maybe I was going to do variations on Augustus Gloop, but then it was like, no, 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 no. We're going to make each one totally different so you don't know. Every time the Oompa Loompas come out, like, what they're going to do. And uh, so, all right, great. And so went into Veruca, and then Mike TV, mm -hmm. and then finally uh, Violet Beauregard. The first one is, in fact, modeled after, like, a big Bombay percussive piece. It was really fun. It was Augustus Gloop. Augustus Gloop, Augustus Gloop, the great big green evening come poop. I just had never had more fun writing the thing, producing the demo, doing all the vocals, like 50 vocals on it. And I send it out to Tim, not knowing what he's going to think. And he's going, yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, we're good, we're good, that's good. Well, also, the fact that I wanted the Impaloopas to have, uh, even though they were all visually the same, which is why, in, in the end, we ended up just using my voice, because it added a homogenous quality that normally I wouldn't want to do. I would get four, five, or six singers, and we'd we'd break up the vocals like a nightmare when I did a gang vocal. There was five of us doing all the vocals. And, uh, but here, the homogeny, the, the kind of, the, the unified quality of one voice many times, I think kind of worked with the fact that they were all kind of cloned Oompa Loompas anyhow. I would take two vocals and do them at a six, which starts to get a little munchkiny, and two vocals and do them at a four, which is just slightly altered and then leave uh, the rest uh, natural. Mm -hmm. So I was experimenting with different groups of how many I want to leave natural and how many I want to tweak, and song by song, they're all different. So I finally ended up just kind of, I'd start a song and I'd quickly set up 40 or 50 blank tracks and name them and, and divide them up into groups of either fours or sixes and just start doing tons of vocals. And it was just really nuts, it was just fun. The second one I did was Mike TV and do something like crazy, like, you know, like Oompa Loompa Rock and it should be like Queen, it should be like, like, like you're nuts. All right, I don't know, what the heck, I'll do it. You know, he'll still want to tweak an area or like try something in some area here or like it's good, but can we put in a chorus here that is like suddenly like uh Abba, you know, with their hands up in the air at the, like, really, really high in the soaring strings. And it's like, whew, all right, let me see. Let me see. Let me see what I can do. And, uh, right. and I would kind of do something about that. And it's like, yeah, yeah, that, that's it. So he, he just responds. You know, he just responds very visceral. It's like, uh, it either gets him or it doesn't. And for Veruca, it's like psychedelia. It's hippie. It's mamas and the papas meets Abba meets this meets that so I was going at this point I was like great and I was just like dive right in and there were sequences I was writing that my wife would come down and there, there are some parts where I'd stop and I just like I was laughing I just couldn't keep doing it and I'd have to like calm down and do it again and I go check check this little section out What's it gonna be? I think I think it has to be 70s shaft, black exploitation film. And he goes, yeah, I think that's the way to go. 
got my guitar and my wah-wah pedal out, which I hadn't used in ages, and I had to like really get into the wah 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 wah, wah. I just loved it. Cause I did as little adapting as I could. I had to change uh, Violet Beauregard a little bit because in the book, they're not singing about Violet, they're singing about a girl who, this is what happens to her if she chews gum all day long. And uh, so it's a lesson about like another girl and I had to make the song about Violet. But other than that, I tried to change um, as little as I could. I've always been like a kind of a solo one per I mean, that's why it's natural for me to do my own demos and do my own songs and record all my own vocals and do everything, because I've always been a working loner. And so I'm happy that way. I can never work with anybody around me. And I've never had a working assistant. I've never had anybody in the studio with me at all. And even my closest guy, uh, you know, Steve Bartek, who's been working with me, uh, since the Mystic Nights of the Oingo Boingo, you know, it's like he doesn't get to hear anything until it's all done and finished and ready to send out just because I can't. You know, it's got to stay in my head till the very last second. And then finally I could release it. Otherwise, it's bad luck. You know, you let these things out of the box too early, they might come and bite you. But then there was this common link between all the songs, which is that they're all sung by a big group. At first, I didn't think we can pull it off because. How do I get the style to this, this song, this feel? Yet, it's all Oompa Loompas singing in group. I'm kind of used to doing like, kind of a one-man band type of presentation. So when I started cutting the Oompa Loompa songs, I didn't know what I was doing moment to moment. I was just kind of improvising, but I had a mic there and I would just grab the mic and I would sing eight parts and I would mix the eight parts down to two. Then I would lay down 10 parts and I'd lay the 10 parts down to two. You know, all right, I gotta do four tracks of you know, and I got to get into that mode. Then I got, I got those, and I got, I got, and I got to get like the falsettos. So I'll have to do it eight times. And at a certain point, you start kind of going crazy, you know. So not. I mean, it, when I'm singing and playing down here, there's a up above there. There's like a little area that there's a vent that goes through into the living room, and you can kind of hear. And uh, more than a few times, I think my wife was thinking that I was going crazy because I was just going, yeah, you know, like a whole bunch of times with all this music playing. And at a certain point, you go, all right, he's losing it. You know, and I, what's going on down there? And I just go, oh, no, 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 it's cool, it's cool, it's cool. Right, right. Hello, happy holiday, and Merry Christmas to all of you. And I just want to remind you that not all of Danny's dolls are scary. I'm not scary. Well, not unless you're not nice to me. But why wouldn't you be nice to me? <laughs> be very, not very smart to, to not be nice to me. Merry Christmas. Hi, I also want to wish you Merry Christmas, Happy Hanukkah, and Happy Holidays to everybody. And don't take what she said very seriously. She says things that she doesn't mean. And quite frankly, I wouldn't trust her. Hi, it's me, buddy. Wishing you happy holidays and Merry Christmas. I hope you have a really good one. Uh, Danny would be here to wish you Merry Christmas too, but when the holidays start, we have to lock him in the closet. <laughs> it's for his own good. You understand. He sometimes hurts himself. <laughs> I'll tell you a story and make a skeleton cry of our own jubiliciously lovely corpse bride. Miles around, 
mysterious stranger came into town. He was plenty good looking, he looked down on his cash. And our poor little baby, she fell hot and fast when her daddy said no. She just couldn't cope. So our lovers came up with a plan to elope. Die, die, we all pass away. 